the Sox today, leading 8-3 here in the night. Special thanks to our entire WGN Sports crew. Put together a one-hour pregame today. I mentioned Dan Rohn, our producer, Mark Brady, our director, Skip Ellison, Doug Stanton, our associate producer, our executive producer, Bob Vorwald, Paula Oscroba, our stage manager in the booth, and again, our wonderful crew putting in long hours today to make it all happen. And Carlos Marmel, Hoping for a nice, quick one, two, three, ninth inning. Only 15 hits allowed so far in the year. Carlos Quentin made it two nothing in the first with a two out, two run single, and the White Sox have only scored one run since. Ryan Dempster with a quality seven innings, three runs. Slider in there, 0-2 on Quentin. You just don't see very many comfortable at bats against Carlos Marmol, let alone base hits. Guys just don't look comfortable facing him. Got two plus plus weapons to use that fastball in the mid to upper 90s with a little bit of late movement and then that vicious slider. Hey, you're almost in a situation as a hitter where you have to guess one or the other, and even if you guess right, there's no guarantee you're going to hit it hard. Katze and Brzezinski also do up this inning. Marmel in a non save spot with his team leading by five. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Sliders early in the sequence. Finishes it off with a fastball off the inside corner. Man, that is a tough at bat for Carlos Quinn. It's been a tough at bat for a lot of hitters against Marmel this year. Well, there's no question Marmel has better command of his slider. That's why when he's behind in the count, he throws more sliders than fastballs. And you could tell on that strikeout pitch that not only did Quinton not know where that fastball was going, I don't think Marmel quite knew where it was going to end up. And that makes him effectively wild. You know, and everything you just said, Len, is common knowledge around baseball. Everybody knows Marmel controls his slider better than his fastball. It doesn't make it any easier to hit, even when you know it's coming. Well, the other thing is, some guys might be better off not swinging in a particular plate appearance, and they would probably see four balls before they would get three strikes. However, nobody wants to hit with two strikes against him. That's why they do what Mark Kotze just did. <laughs> and the one thing you try to avoid usually ends up happening two strikes. That would have been a strike either way. Now he's more deceptive with his fastball than he is his slider. <laughs> as backwards as that sounds. Well, he's got a lot of deception in his delivery to begin with. He has a lot of moving parts out there on the mound. He picks up that front foot, bends over at the waist, and then stands almost straight up again before delivering the pitch. He gives you a lot of things to look at above and beyond his great stuff. Ball four, Katze takes the walk. Staff has been around the plate all day, just the second walk issued. Red still trailing bottom eight. Cleveland leading 5 3. 
Twins can take, uh, or the White Sox can take solace in the fact that Twins lost in New York. Detroit did beat Atlanta 10-4. The team ahead of the Cubs, the Brewers won 3-0 over Seattle. St. Louis getting blasted at Kansas City 10-2 in the eighth. That's a strike. Two and one. An odd sight. Comes on defense, and Derek Lee's in the dugout. He's the DH today. Three and two. What oh, a ground ball to Jeff Baker. Sounds good to me. I was just thinking the same thing. You know, we're down here at the bottom of the White Sox order. You don't want to start messing around, walking guys, and roll over to the top and eventually get to the middle of that lineup where you have some guys that can do damage. And he's walked two in a row. I'm going to bring Larry Rothschild to the mound and Gordon. Uh, Alexei Ramirez to the plate with Beckham on deck. One pitch at a time. One pitch at a time. It's always part of the discussion when Larry comes out. I think what you see sometimes, Len, and I don't know if this is an explanation for all closers around baseball, but. We've seen it happen repeatedly when you bring your closer into a ball game that's not a safe situation. For whatever reason, they seem to struggle. I think sometimes they just get a little too far ahead of themselves. They want to end the game too quickly. They're not really focusing on each individual pitch. So Larry's message, uh, one pitch at a time. Maybe your focus is heightened by the uh, extra adrenaline you get in a safe spot. Ramirez pops it up into shallow left as Soriano will come in and make the play. Two down, and here comes Beckham. converted catcher fair ball down the left field line sending Kotze to the plate Krasinski stops at third it's now eight to four About far enough. Beckham keeps it fair just inside that third base bag down into the corner for extra bases. Fortunately, the White Sox had A.J. Przinski running at first base. He could only make it as far as the other corner at third. So it's Juan Pierre, and the infielders are in because he still could bunt. Pierre knows that the uh, RBIs here are not the big thing for the White Sox. It's just keeping this game alive, getting on base some way. Andrew Jones is on deck. Right field, it's going to get down. They're going to get two, and the time run's going to come to the plate. Andrew Jones is going to hit for Viciedo, and all of a sudden it's 8 6. We've seen some rarities in this ball game today from Juan Pierre, a guy that only had nine RBIs coming into today, drives in two with this base hit. 
Willie had 18 strikeouts on the season in 285 at bats. We saw him strike out today. He only had 10 walks on the year. Low average, but 10 home runs for Andrew Jones. And Pierre's going to take second without a throw. Will not get a stolen base. Takes away the force at second. But we're not concerned about him. Two balls, no strikes. Rios on deck, and then Canerco. Carlos Marmol has walked two, has given up two hits, and all of a sudden it's 8 6. 3 and 0. Oh, he held. Nobody up in the bullpen. Three and one. So it's marble or bust at this point. Got a high strike that both teams have been getting today from home plate umpire Gary Darling. All four. That one missed badly. And we get to that point again, Bob. As Soto's going to go out. Lou could warm somebody up, but then the question is, who would you rather have? As much as he's struggled, we know that he's the nastiest guy they have in the bullpen. So it, this is him. It's all up to him. We've seen this movie many times before, too, in save situations from time to time where Marmon will come in and walk a couple of batters, fall behind the third hitter, and then all of a sudden it'll click. He'll start dropping that slider in there for strikes. We need him to click quickly. Brent Lillibridge is running for Jones. Ball on the Rios. Well, a few fans uh, left with this game 8 3, but now it's 8 6. 2 and 0. Oh. Larry Rothschild's already made a trip to the mound. Just caught the outside corner. Okay. Well, that's a gift. Yeah, it is. That's a good two strike slider. Two and two. Better one this time. The kick and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Whew. He strikes out Rios. Gave up three runs in the ninth. But the Cubs hang on by their fingernails. Eight six the final. So the outfielders with a hug, and the Cubs get out of here with a win. 8-6, we'll be back. <laughs>